Welcome. Let's discuss secant lines in a circle. A secant line, it's a line that intersects the circle at two different locations. Let's call those intersections A and B. Here's another example of a secant line. Notice that it intersects the circle at two different locations. So let's write this down. And the difference between a secant line and a tangent line is that a tangent line, it only intersects the circle at one location. If we look at the definition that we have said, we have also have described a chord as a line that intersects the circle at two points as well. So what is the difference between a chord and a secant line? A chord is just a line segment. It has a starting point and an ending point. So we can also say that the chord is just a small section of a secant line. So if we consider the secant line AB, if we just measure the distance from A to B, then we can consider this line as a chord. So the same idea with the other secant line. If we consider the whole line, we call that a secant. But if we just consider the length of those intersections, that's what we call a chord. What are some properties that secant lines have with circles? Let's take a look into that. There are three cases that we would like to discuss. In the first case, we want to see what happens when we have two secant lines in a circle. Let's draw those two secant lines. When the secant lines intersect, they create an angle. Let's call this angle one. And then in addition, we have also created two arcs, arcs DA and arc CB. For simplicity, let's call arc DAX and let's call arc CBY. And the relationship that angle one has with arc X and Y is that the measurement of the angle of the intersection, angle one, it is equivalent to one half times the difference of the arcs, the outer arc, which is Y, minus the inner arc, which is X. But what would happen if we consider two tangent lines? Let's draw those tangent lines. Let's call those points of intersection point A and point B. Notice that we have the same scenario. The intersection also creates an angle. Let's call it angle one. And we also have created two arcs, the bottom arc, which is in yellow, and the upper arc, which is in pink. Let's say that the yellow arc has a length of x, and let's say that the pink arc has a length of y. The same relationship holds true. The value created by the intersections, which in this case is angle 1, it is equal to one half of the difference of the outer arc, y, minus the inner arc, which is x. So we have the same conclusion. But what if we have a combination of those two? What do we have one secant line and one tangent line? Let's start by drawing our secant line. And now let's draw our tangent line. And again, notice that the intersection creates an angle. Let's call it angle one. And in addition, we have two arcs, the inner arc, and the outer arc. Let's say that the yellow arc has a measurement of x degrees, and let's say that the pink arc has a length of y degrees. And the same conclusion holds true. The measurement of the angle created by the intersection, which is angle one, it is still equivalent to one half minus the outer arc, which is y, minus the inner arc, which is x. So notice that we always have the same conclusion. The angle created by the intersection will always be equivalent to one half times the difference of the outer arc minus the inner arc. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.